The last a keynote speech today will be given by um, Alice Masek, and she's the artist who designed the paper cut work that's presented over there. It was actually, she was helped by a number of volunteers yesterday, and uh, we're going to finish it today during the break. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much, Alice. Hi, I'm Alice Helen Masek. He pronounced it very well. <laughs> it's a Czech name. I am also a graduate of Crown College in 1971. The first four-year graduating class. When, we, when I arrived here in 19, the, sum, the fall of 1967, or would it be, have been 66? Anyway, whatever it was four years before that, um, the, the, the courtyards were red mud with trenches in them, so you had to walk across planks to get to the doors of the dorms. Wow, <laughs> it was quite an adventure. Anyway, I had no idea when I was here at Crown College studying ultimately history of, um, history of um, science and economic history, those were my majors. I had no idea that many years later I would become a person who did giant paper cuttings with churches and so social justice groups across the country. It just happened. And I always encourage young people to have their eyes wide open and have their ears and, and the heart, the, the sensory methods of their heart and soul too, to, because God, God or the creator or whoever we want to call this larger force in the world might have something in mind for you that no one ever did before, or maybe that no one ever thought of before. So anyway, I saw giant paper cuttings done by an artist named Nancy Chin, and um, started doing them myself. And a lot of them have been social justice, so that's what I want to share with you today. This, this image is one um, that was for a millennial peace retreat. I'm sorry, have you been able to hear me? Have I not been close enough to the mic? It's been okay, okay. This one was one for a millennial peace retreat in, on the December 31st, 1999, going into the year 2000, which was a pretty significant cam calendar change. You know. And so there were, at this retreat in, in the city of Oakland at a retreat center, there were 13 multicultural and multi-religious events happening, and one of them was this paper cutting. Obviously, we didn't finish it that day, but we put it, we hung it um, up so that it could be raised at midnight to the tune of Beethoven's Ode to Joy from the Ninth Symphony. Very beautiful music. And it was, it was a very meaningful part of the closing ceremony of that retreat, going into the new century at midnight. And um, people said that one of the things that was most meaningful was that, that it was um, not finished. That, that we still have so much more to do, and obviously we do and have still much more to do. But this was based on a poem that, about the despoiling of the country of Wales by coal mining in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and the hope that came out of the fact that nature and that something very special and holy rising over the earth each morning brought fresh hope and, and renewal. And so that's what that was about. And it was cut by a group of people that were very much looking towards a hopeful future at that point. So can you see how it's social justice and the fact that everyone cut it together and made it happen together was an important part of it. Okay, here's this, another one, I hope. Okay, this was for a season of nonviolence uh, celebration. An organization in Oakland um, called the Season of Nonviolence was, had an active time during the span of time from the death date of Martin Luther King Jr. to the death date of Mahatma Gandhi, which I found rather ironic. Um, and the, the logo of their organization was that running figure at the bottom carrying the heart with the dove in it. And when they asked me to do a paper cutting, I added the earth in there. And I was told everything I could not put on there. I was allowed to put the city of Oakland in the top and a group of, of uh, people protesting in the middle. And the banner that they're carrying had to be wrapped up because they didn't want me to put a word on it that would indicate what the cause was. It could be 
any number of causes. So I invite people to think about if the banner is unfurled, what their cause would be on, on that banner. But anyway, I was told that I could not put on anything that, ha had a, that showed a weapon or violence or a grave or anything like that. I couldn't put anything to do with those things, except a broken glass. Uh, kind of in the, beyond the face of the dove, you'll see kind of a shattered looking little thing. That's the broken glass of the Jewish tradition that's a symbol of the brokenness of the world. But I was able to, um, then I had to come up with all the other stuff out of my head. So I put in the Peaceable Kingdom and a tutoring session. And one of my friends that was in that group had lost a son in Oakland to gunfire violence during that year, and she really needed something to be there about grieving. So I slipped something in. Um, there's kind of a Native American girl with kind of a shadowy looking grandmother figure. She, the girl is holding a bouquet of flowers. And you can't tell whether she's just bringing flowers to her grandmother or whether they're going together to put flowers on a grave. For my friend, that was good. It worked for her. So anyway, that, that's a, an example of a social justice cutting. And again, the fact that a whole group of people did it together was very meaningful. And when they hung it up for their gatherings, uh, their services and things, uh, it, that meaning then extended on to other people. The size of this is about the size you're seeing it now. It was nine feet wide at the top and about 12 feet tall. Okay, let's see if this is gonna work now. Nope. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> it went to the next one. Was that you guys? <laughs> All right. This one's very different, isn't it? Um, in Fairmont Hospital in Oakland, um, which is in Alameda, it's actually in San Leandro, it's the um, hospital for the poor. And a lot of people live in that hospital that there's just no other place for them. They're what's called medically indigent. And they're just being taken care of by our society. What a sad thing but there was a wonderful chaplain there that was really making their lives better. And she, uh, when the 9-11 incident happened in, in New York City, um, she went for two weeks as a volunteer chaplain on Ground Zero. Now, can you, you can imagine what a powerful experience that much the bit. It, it was horrific. When she came back, she still had dreams and nightmares about it. And one of the dreams she had, she was standing on the hot ashes of Ground Zero, looking up at the wreckage, and in her dream, some part of that twisted metal was confining or trapping something. And then the hand of God reached down and pulled it open and let out four white doves at the top. You can hardly see them, but there are four white doves against that shiny material. I should have backed them with a better contrast, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, that was a wonderful image, and she asked me to make a paper cutting of it a year later for a memorial service. And this paper cutting was multi-layered. It has a gray fabric against the wall behind it, and then the black cutting goes all the way down to the floor behind, and it's it's the twisted wreckage that had confined the doves. And then the layer in front was taken, copied from a, a Life magazine photograph of an actual piece of the wreckage. And um, the process of painting that silver um, uh, made a shadow that we subsequently also used, you know, like a stencil shadow. But that um, making of that piece involves staff and volunteers, and even some of the patients of Fairmont Hospital were able to participate in that. And when we, when we pulled it together and had a worship service with it, that worked fantastic. Uh, it was just an absolutely glorious event. I hope, I hope you can imagine it was just really a blessing. Okay, next one. This house represents a program that's run by several groups in San Francisco um, on behalf of women who desperately need help. And so it's a safe house, and it does not look like this because it's an anonymous safe house. They don't want anyone to know what the real one looks like because it, it could be you know, vandalized or whatever. And so I got to make up this house. It's 14 feet tall by nine feet wide. And the Presentation Sisters of San Francisco, which, who are a wonderful group of, of women who are Catholic nuns, um, cut it together. 
in order to make sacred space for their um, retreat center and presentation center in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Bear Creek Road. You probably know where Bear Creek, Bear Creek Road is. Anyway, and it was very successful along with a cutting about the history of their order. Both of these cuttings, even though they were very big, were done Friday evening and Saturday until two o'clock and the group had finished them all. And there were about 24 women, 12 to each table, who worked on these. But the most important thing in the eyes of the president of their order was the things that happened when they were on the, at the cutting tables. Some sisters connected that had been passing like ships in the dark for 30 years. Here's the other group. And this, uh, the president was so impressed with that, the hopefulness of the fact that people became friends over these cutting tables in a new and special way that she brought me with her, th this president of the presentation order, brought me with her to Esopus, New York, to a place that looks like a palace at Mount Alphonsus Retreat Center to meet with the International Presentation Assembly. 59 women from 29 countries of the world came to this wonderful retreat to look at what the presentation sisters are doing in not only their individual parts of the world, but for the world as a whole. Now, they wanted me to come, yes, with a map, again, a, a world map kind of thing, so they could put their photo, photos of their sisters from all around the world on the continents, but also, they wanted me to come prepared to listen to their discussions and come up with 18 different four by four foot cuttings to be cut at their discussion tables. And so the first few days, I was gleaning images for those cuttings. And on the, that fourth day, when those are all ready, we put them on the tables and the sisters cut. Oh, this is the map that I made for them. But you notice I made it with South uh, North America and South America on the right, and Asia and Africa on the left, which is kind of atypical. You know, you're used to seeing it the other way. And the currents, you'll have to just trust me for this because it's hard to read them. Um, the currents had words in them going around, and when the map was in this position, the words were like, words were like comparisons and fight and suffering and hunger and enmity and all kinds of negative conflict words. Then when you hung it endwise up, then the words were process words. And then the third time you hung it upside down, they were celebration words, which we did at the end. So that, was, that in itself was a pretty meaningful exercise. That was cut while the, while the other designs were being drawn. Now this was the day when they were cutting the designs around the table and afterwards, Sisters testified to the woman in charge of the whole event that their understanding of each other and their knowing of each other and their ability or willingness to listen and compromise had very much been deepened by the process of cutting together over the tables. And that was exactly what we'd hoped for, so that was wonderful. Here are some of the designs, the, the smaller ones that were cut. We have a storyteller, a tinker, um, an, a worm farm, uh, a river of life, and at the, the bottom right-hand corner, a jubilee, a uh, release from slavery. And there were two others, and anyway, it was a very powerful experience for them. At the end, they um, had a closing ceremony under another cutting that they did, which was a praying hands canopy. They just put their hands down on the white piece of paper and traced it and cut it and let it dangle like a hand. And it was um, just a beautiful, almost like grape arbor looking uh, thing to top their celebration. So that was a wonderful opportunity to be with people that, that were from, from around the world looking for a better world. And at that event, they voted to use funds of the Presentation Sisters to pay for and support one of their sisters to be a non-governmental organization representative at the United Nations that year. Now that was an interesting use of their funds and they, they would have a presentation sister at the United Nations ready to give input on all the issues that came up before the United Nations. I was really proud of them. 
I'm sure some of the ones from, the, um, from Africa and South America and, Tas and Tasmania would have rather seen those funds maybe used for food for some of their poor people or, or for medical care or something. And that was probably some of the discussion that was happening over the tables. But ultimately, they decided instead of tinkering, fixing pots, trying to make a little corners of the world better, that they would go for trying to make a better pot in the first place by, by dealing with the United Nations. I hope it helped. I don't know, very soon after that, the world turned upside down. <laughs> so, oh well. Um, this paper cutting right here is the great vision of black elk. And about 100 UCSC students worked on this in August and January. And it is now hanging at Provost uh, Faye Crosby's house down in Cowell College. And it may soon be hanging in a dorm here at Merrill. Um, there's a whole long story about that that I don't have time to tell. Um, but I do want, do I have still a few minutes left or not? Yes, yes. Uh, OK. Yes. I, I do want to say that this art form of paper cutting in large groups like this has some real benefits. And, and one is that everyone is working on just a small part of it. It's not until the whole thing is raised up that you see what it is altogether. And some people say, oh, wow, isn't it like that in life? We work on a small part. We can't see the whole picture. Wow, that's cool. And then, the, then when you raise it up, everybody goes, whoa, I helped make that. There's a moment of awe that's like the wonder that, that you're talking about, the, the incredible feeling of having worked together to accomplish something beautiful. And, and the meaning in these cuttings comes from the shape of the line where the seen and the unseen, the there and the not there, meet. And that's pretty powerful metaphor also. Maybe where physical reality meets up against ideas. I don't know. There are a lot of different ways you can look at that. So, um, but most important, working together to make something beautiful is uh, an incredible, and hopefully at some point, the something beautiful we make will be a better world. Thank you. <laughs>